All right, have and have not fans. Uh, <laughs> this video might be a little long, and this is because I was originally going to break it down, break it down into two separate videos. Uh, one was going to be called as Hannah putting the pieces of the puddle puzzle together, you know, given the fact that uh, she was about to leave Catherine's house in order to pick up Benny, you know, after he got out of jail, but then caught Charles, you know, on TV, giving a speech for his presidential campaign. And he mentioned, you know, right when she was about to hit the power, you know, hit the remote to turn the TV off that about the shooting, you know, Quincy Jr., that he's a friend. He has some friends within the young family. And just that moment, you kind of got the notion that Hannah was suspecting foul play in regards to, you know, the fact that Secret Service kept coming in and out of the room with Benny and none of uh, what Catherine, well, excuse me, Catherine, Mitch, Benny, Hannah, Veronica, none of them knew what was going on when it came to Secret Service. If anything, it sounded like Benny was crazy, but given the circumstances, you can really understand why he was talking the way he was, because it's like, he got arrested under, you know, false pretenses, just assuming that he had something to do with the Quincy murder. Then you had Secret Service coming in and out of the room. I can honestly see the bait and switch there, why you feel confused, even the part where that cop actually came in saying you're free to go. Uh, you know, some fans were probably like, Benny, get up and go. But, you know, if I were Benny, I would have been a suspect myself. It's just like, okay, so one minute is like good cop, bad cop. Somebody's taking my DNA. Now you're telling me I can't leave anywhere or now, oh, I can free to go. I'll be confused too. Now, the thing is, uh, well, th and then the other video I was going to do is about, you know, is Hannah wrong for not in wanting to involve Candace in the uh, funeral planning for uh, Quincy Jr. So I decided, you know, both topics are so intertwined that I might as well just put them into one. So this video might be a bit long. So just kind of, you know, hang in there, get some popcorn or even you could just play this while you're washing dishes or something or folding laundry because it is going to be a doozy. So, oh, um, <laughs> I, do, I do have some good news just randomly throwing in there that uh, I was able to reach out to Tyler Perry Studios and uh, I did get confirmation that the videos they copyrighted you know, infringement are going to be put back up. Uh, first one being, you know, the video I did a few weeks ago about uh, what does Jennifer's body have to do with the plot? And more recently, my 30 minute video about is can't, or what is it? I believe the title was, uh, is Candace getting what she deserves uh, when it came to, you know, her reaction to Quincy Jr.'s death and, you know, and so on and so forth. That video, I'm not going to lie. When that video got took down, I was about a week and a half ago. I got a notification. I was about to do a farewell video saying I was done with YouTube because I, I just had it. The fact that I don't copy, I mean, I don't steal anything. I don't post full video. I don't post videos of the episodes or anything like that. Yet I'm the one to get a signal out where there are channels out there that post full episodes that it has and have not. So I do read my comment section. And again, I just have to reiterate that I do not under any circumstances now or in the future plan to post any links or episodes on my channel it doesn't work that way so i did speak with somebody about that i reached out to them finally they answered back i was shocked and they said within the next maybe seven days or so i should see my videos repopulating on the channel so that's god right there because again i was about to get on here do a fair i was literally going to say tyler perry's the haves and the have nots my final video that was it it was going to be done like uh, would have been like michael jackson uh, this is it this is the final curtain call that would have been it my last video so i'm glad things have been worked out they said they would just watch out for my videos in terms of when they do the copyright stuff on a daily basis they'll pretty much you know push mine to the side so they won't do that anymore that's a blessing so with that being said let's kind of jump into it uh this video is going to be a combination, as I said, of, um, excuse me, Hannah putting the pieces together about why Benny might have been arrested and also, you know, her being reluctant to have Candace involved in the planning of Quincy's funeral. And so, as I said before, you know, Kath, uh, excuse me, Hannah was about to leave Catherine's house to pick up Benny caught Charles on the television talking about the shooting that took place near where his speech was going down, which of course was Quincy Jr. being caught in the crossfire of uh, Warlock and his crew. And maybe it hasn't happened just yet, but you know, Hannah is probably just trying to, you know, figure things out at the moment because again, Charles said that he has friends within or close to some of the young family. And the fact that, you know, Benny kept bringing up the secret service, but having no clue what was going on, 
than the fact that, of course, she has nothing to do with it because she hasn't met with any kind of political figures in terms of Secret Service level. So obviously, Candace would be the one, given the fact that Charles mentioned the shooting, saying that he was close to the family. And then Candace is pretty much the wild card that's been running around ever since, you know, the shooting itself. So it stands to reason that Hannah will be quick to say, you know what, Candace, this is all your fault because of the fact that you've been messing around with some kind of political person. And given the fact that she's messed around with Jim and whatnot, who is running for governor, of course, Hannah will be one to jump to conclusions, but actually be right. And that's why I feel it's going to cause some animosity during you know, the scene where Benny's like, hey, we should have Candace involved in this. And she's like, no, why? Because she didn't have anything to do with him when he was alive. So why should he be planning the funeral? So I can, for the first time, I can actually see both sides of the argument, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, not me saying, Benny, shut up, just sit down somewhere, you're stupid. Or Hannah, like, Hannah, you're way too hypocritical, sit down somewhere. I could see where both of these characters are coming from. Because a mother losing her child is a powerful thing. Regardless of, you know, who they are as people, the fact that they lost a child is just powerful. So I could see why some people would think Hannah is wrong for not involving Candace in the funeral planning. However, from a grandmother, put it this way, not just as a grandmother standpoint, but also the one who actually gave a damn about Quincy Jr., I could see why she would want nothing to do with Candace or have her put her finger anywhere near due to the fact that Candace really did nothing for the child. Let's be honest here, seriously. And again, when my video reposts back to YouTube, the one about, you know, is Candace getting what she deserves? I'm not even going to go into like a 30 minute rant like I did on that one about, you know, why I feel Candace has no right to be upset or blame Hannah for that matter. So I feel that he's because Hannah's going to put it together that Candace is the reason that Benny got arrested. And then because of that, wouldn't want her to have anything to do with Quincy's funeral. I mean, that's one of many reasons. Benny, on the other hand, most likely does not know about this, obviously, because it, I'm not blaming him for being, you know, absent minded like Amanda, you know, back in, you know, early seasons. But the fact that there are so many times where these characters withheld information from each other, such as hannah not telling benny the truth about tony i could see why she would want tony to be the one to tell him why he wanted him off life support but at the same time i feel it's a i feel that benny has a right to know so you've even before you know the accident where you know benny got into coma then he woke up acting weird he's always been the middleman between hannah and candace because he loves his little sister as well as his mother he just doesn't like the fact that those two can't get along but he has both of their you know, backs, he'll, he'll put his life on the line for both of them, let's just say that much. But I just think in this situation, he needs to be fully aware of what's going on, the fact that, you know, hey, because of Candace messing around with Charles, that's why Benny was, you know, arrested. However, on the flip side, he most likely won't know the fact that Candace gave up, you know, pretty much an entirely clean slate to become first lady, or, you know, at least Charles' escort on his way to the presidency, she gave that up to have Benny, you know, avoiding being railroad, railroaded. So I feel that Can um, Hannah's going to jump on Candace's case about the fact that I bet you've been messing with that Charles because I heard it on the TV that he's close to the young family. And I know damn well me and Benny don't know him. So you're the only one I could see that happening. Then when Candace tries to talk about how, oh, well, he offered me this and that, but I gave it up to save Benny. How do you think he got out of jail? I could see, um, you know, Hannah not believing it. Remember when, um, remember when, uh, it was towards the end of the season where, you know, Quincy attacked Candace and, uh, Oscar pretty much. It was around the time when Oscar left and took Candace's money. And then Benny and Hannah went over to Candace's house and, you know, uh, she was trying to prove that she has money and whatnot, but then got on the computer, but her money was gone. And then Benny and Hannah both left like, you know what, this girl's lying. We're done with her. I feel like the same situation is going to happen now, but this time with Charles involved. So, man, it again, it really is hard to tell whose side to be on. I would just say this much. K Hannah is right. Let's say Hannah is right. However, I can see Benny being reluctant to believe her at first because Hannah's always, as Benny, Benny said it plenty of times, is like, you always want to assume the worst about Candace. He is absolutely right. The thing is about eight out of 10 times, Hannah's actually correct. It's just the way she goes about it, you know? 
So I can see why Benny is going to be reluctant to even because again that scene it was just a little little small scene though it's kind of like Benny telling Hannah you know hey we need to get Candace involved and she's like no she had nothing to do with him with how he was living so she shouldn't be involved in the planning again I can see both sides of that uh, even in the preview for next week's episode we even, well excuse me this week's episode we have uh, Benny trying to recite the Lord's prayer and again that's a powerful thing because he's trying to help his mother find her faith again. But the fact that uh, him being the one to mention um, God is actually pretty powerful because, again, it's not that Benny is a non I wouldn't say he's a non believer. It's just that he isn't strong in the faith like his mother. This goes back way to season one when I uh, can't uh, excuse me. Uh, Hannah was trying to get Benny to come to, you know, Bible study or church with him or uh, her on Sunday. And, uh, wow, I mean, again, it's just powerful stuff. I'm just kind of like, I'm not like lost for words, but I'm just like reminiscing on that preview. It's just powerful to see Benny. Uh, it's almost, it's kind of weird to see Panna of all people losing faith. It's almost like, uh, when, uh, Benny was in the coma to begin with in the hospital, she was in the chapel, uh, you know, that nun or nurse or whatever was helping her out, you know, trying to help her pray, but she didn't even want to talk to God. It's almost the same thing here. And that's reflected in the, oh gosh, this scene right here. Oh my God. It's hard to tell which scene caused the most uproar amongst fans in the last episode. The first scene I want to bring up is the fact that, you know, Candace was saying that Hannah didn't protect her son and that she was the one that should be dead instead of Quincy Jr. Fans went off and then, oh my gosh, when uh, Candace went to the actual motel room of the shooting and then she's like, so God, where are you, God? And everybody was like, Candace, where were you? I mean, they said stronger words than Candace, but uh, let's just put it, leave it at that. So it's kind of interesting the fact that, you know, both are calling out to God. Well, actually, here's the thing. Um, Hannah isn't calling out to anybody. She's just. I feel like Crystal Fox just brings Hannah to life in the fact that Christians are not perfect. Christians are not perfect. He, all right, let, let's put it this way. Let's talk about myself for a minute here. I'm not very trusting, put it that way, because, you know, when you've been betrayed and deceived, you know, and when you just see when you've lived life, and I mean, I'm only 25 about to turn 26. So I'm pretty sure some most of y'all listening have been through a lot more than I have. I haven't been through like a lot of stuff that you might find it will feel as, you know, oh, that's nothing compared to what I've been through. Let, let's just, just hear me out. When you've seen how some people, like, even like your closest friend, pretty much Erica's a perfect example of a two-faced friend. You know what I mean? Somebody who will stab you in the back or pretend they're your friend or something to those, you know, some to those uh, extents. I'm not very trusting. Let's just leave it at that. So am I a believer? Yes. I was, I was saved at the age of eight, grew up in a Baptist church, loved going, and I trust in God. I put my faith in him. However, here's what I mean, Here, and this, this might sound controversial, but hear me out on this. When I say that I'm not very trusting or I don't trust anyone, that doesn't mean I don't trust God. Do I trust him completely? Yes and no. What do I mean by that? Yes, I do trust God with everything I have and I have faith. However, I am only human. I am only human. There are times when I question God. There are times when I doubt what's going on around me. Here's the way I, here's the way I look at it. Here's the way I look at it. Every time I question God, every time I doubt something or I doubt, you know, the situation God has put me in, I feel like I'm taking a little bit, a little chip away of my trust and faith that I need to restore. And that's even harder. It's like, you know, like a relationship if somebody cheats on you. You're never going to look at them the same way again. So even if you get back together, there's always going to be that side eye you give them because they broke the trust. It's, it, it, it takes it's easy to break, but it takes, it's nearly impossible to put back together again. You know, you see what I mean here? It's almost like losing weight and gaining weight. It's like, it's easy to gain fat, you know, just by eating and eating and eating. But it's hard to be, to get that fat gone because you had to work it off. You had to put more, it takes more effort to try to fix something that you broke than it is to originally break it. You see what I mean there? So every time I doubt God, I feel like, you know, that statement I make of, I believe, I mean, I trust in God. I have complete faith in him that is chipped away every time I doubt him. So when I say I have trust issues or I don't completely trust anyone, that's actually a factual statement because I do trust God. But being a human, I do not have omnipotence. I don't, I'm not able to see and know everything. So 
when I'm stepping into a realm of the unknown, unless I have my full, complete trust in God, then I cannot truly say that I completely trust in him because my own doubt, this is me talking about my faults, my doubts is actually taken away from my trust. And I have to work on that. I feel, and again, I'm not judging anybody, but I hope it, so it any Christian or believer listening to this message right now, I'm not even trying, this is Sunday, but I'm not even trying to preach. Maybe it's my uh, school of divinity degree speaking here, but I just wanted to let you know that that's how I perceive Hannah, you know, not perfection because we're not meant to be perfect. God doesn't want us to be perfect. However, he wants us to trust in him. So when I say that I have trust issues, that pretty much explains it. And I feel the same is true for Hannah. And I have not been through a fraction of what this woman has been through. You can say what you want about Hannah being hypocritical, stereotypical. I, I can agree with most of those statements, but you look at everything she's lost since the, we're not even mentioning the cancer before the show even started. Let's look at from episode one to now, her friend Celine turned out to be, you know, distrustful, deceitful, backstabber. You look at her losing her friend Catherine, you know, gaining a friendship with her, losing it due to the struggle between her son hitting her son. Then her losing, um, nearly losing her son, Benny, due to the hit and run, losing her grandchild while actually getting him back into her life to begin with, finding out he was being, he was being abused and then losing her. I could just do, I'm not even going to do a video on that. That's just, that'll just be like, a, oh God, oh God, it would just be a list of turmoil and drama because this woman has been through so much. So to see her being reluctant to pray or questioning where God is or not knowing what to say. And it's real. It's real. So when like characters like Catherine or Benny are like, hey, hey, you taught us how to pray. And that was a powerful scene when, you know, Catherine was like, look, you taught me how to pray. Are you taught me how to, you know, look to something greater when I was in my, you know, moment of sorrow after I lost my uh, daughter, Amanda. And, man. I mean, I'm sorry. I just got, let me just calm down. Cause I'm, uh, there's just so much I can say on that. So Crystal Fox is bringing Hannah to life. So I can see why she is doubting God, why she is finding it hard to find the strength or who to look to in this moment of pain. So let's just leave it at that. So with that being said, I'm not ending the video on that note, but just to kind of say that I can understand where Hannah is coming from now. When it comes down to Candace actually encountering, you know, Benny and uh, Candace, I don't know if she's going to be over at Catherine's house during a funeral planning or if the next time Candace will see Benny and Hannah is going to be at the funeral home, like in this scene right there. So only one one can imagine how the encounter is going to be. I mean, as I mentioned before, I feel like Benny's going to try to be the middle man to break up any kind of fight between those two. I mean, he's going to be caught up in emotions as well because his nephew is going to be in a coffin, you know, and then to see his mother greet because again, Hannah's grief was real. You could believe that she played Crystal played the heck out of that role during the crying scenes in the in the uh, hospital, then at Catherine's house because she loved that child. Candace, on the other hand, it's more like she just lost something that she just lost something. You know, she just lost something, but she didn't care as much as Hannah did. I mean, I don't care what you say in the comments below because as I said before. This video is just, you know, the beginning, the comment section is the extension of the video. This, these videos like to get the discussion going. The comments is where you just go in. But you cannot really convince me that Hannah did not love that child less than Candace. I'm not saying that Candace did not love Quincy Jr. I'm just saying that he wasn't a, a priority for it. Let's just put it that way. It's more like, you know, oh, so you took something away from me, Warlock. Now you got to die as well. That's pretty much it. Not to mention, when you really think about it, if you look at the scene where Candace was staring Warlock down before the shootout, during the flashbacks in her mind, the first things that came to her, you know, her mind was the fact Warlock was taking advantage of her sexually over and over again. And then finally, the scene where Hannah was holding Quincy, but then again, she was not present at the shooting or the aftermath. So how would she know what the scene looked like? Continuity issues. I'm, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But yeah, it's just like, you know, she got revenge, but you know, good and well, Hannah would not have wanted it to go down like that. So eventually the news is going to break it out that war is dead, which leads to a nut. And again, spoiler alert, a video I'm going to be doing now is actually two videos is like, okay, there's a power struggle going on because 
Remember, where Quincy was killed, Candace thought her problems were over. Next thing you know, Warlock turned out to be a bigger beast than Quincy. Now, with Warlock gone, who's going to be the new big bad? Think about it. Anyway, back to this video. Now, when it comes down to it, I don't. It's hard to tell who's wrong in this situation. I, let's just put it this way. Candace react telling Hannah that she wishes she was dead instead of Quincy. That's unacceptable. I have no sympathy during that scene. That's completely unacceptable. I do not know because I was surprised like Mitch or somebody, you know, when she was, he was, uh, she was calling Mitch about the situation and you know, it was war. He was here. We saw him. It went down the way, you know, you heard it did. I'm surprised. I wish he would have said something along the lines of, you know, your mother did everything she could to try to stop it because Hannah was screaming out there. Wait, we're in here. You know, we're in, ter in terms of her and Quincy Jr. Then taking a baby in the bathroom and everything. She did everything she could, but it wasn't enough. And whew, I'm sorry. That, 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 wow. I mean, I can keep going and going, and I'm pretty sure you want me to with this video. But honestly, all I have to say is that Hannah is putting the pieces together slowly but surely in regards to Candace being the one to her actions with Charles indirectly led to Benny being, you know, arrested. Hannah, I can see why she doesn't want Candace involved in the funeral planning. And on the Benny side, I can see why he would want or, you know, feels that Candace should be involved. I do understand that. So I want to bring this field to a close because, again, I can keep going if I wanted to. I, let's just I just want to get your thoughts now, because, again, as I said time and time again, these videos are just to get the discussion going. So you keep it going in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Do you think Hannah is wrong for not wanting Candace to be involved in the funeral planning? Do you think Candace is wrong for not only wishing that Hannah was dead instead of her son, but also, you know, questioning where is God now when she in her, in, you know, in the moment that she lost her son or even back in the episode where she was like, what did I do? What did I do? Like, what did I do to deserve this? When we're, where was she was a mother and what do you feel about, you know, Hannah's lack of faith in these moments of, you know, grief? And, you know, as I kind of gave a semi testimony in the video, do you feel those moments as well as a human where you doubt God? So that kind of chips away at your, you know, statement of I truly trust in God because those times of doubts really do kind of, you know, take away or tarnish the meaning of that statement in your own personal life. So again, I want to bring this video to a close. Please like, comment, and subscribe because again, I really can't wait to read the comments on this one.